Okay, in this video, I'm going to review a couple of macros that you can download from the web for use with SPSS in order to carry out uh, regression analysis using robust standard errors. Um, basically, um, when you run uh, regression analysis through the standard approach, um, just a standard linear regression, um, it doesn't take into account uh, the possibility that you might have uh, heteroscedasticity in terms of your uh, residuals. And um, if that is the case, then what that can do, it may not, it, it won't bias your uh, regression coefficients, but it can lead to biases in terms of the standard errors and ultimately your uh, significance tests and confidence intervals. So this is basically uh, a major reason why we care about this particular um, um, uh, issue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to review two macros in particular. Uh, the first one is Andrew Hayes macro. Um, he um, has it on his website, uh, basically on his book website. It looks like there's a new book out, Regression Analysis and Linear Models. And at this particular um, download spot, you can download a zip file containing uh, the RALM um, macro. And you can install it to SPSS and then uh, be able to run it uh, straight from there. So in order to do that, if you just download it from uh, there, uh, you'll just go to um, Extensions, go to Utilities, Install Custom Dialog, and uh, I basically have um, my I have it saved under um, a certain folder here. If you click on this uh, folder here, go down to RLM Macro, and click on it. There's there's the uh, macro. Click on Open. It will install it to your program, and so you can see it's uh, it's installed right here uh, as as RLM Macro by Andrew Hayes. So that's the first one I'm going to demonstrate. The second one uh, actually uh, comes from uh, this website right here. And I just happened upon it by when I uh, 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 ran across this YouTube video uh, explaining it. Uh, and the nice thing about this particular macro is uh, it also allows you to generate robust standard errors for your regression analysis, but it also incorporates the Broich of Pagan test and the Conacher test, uh, which are basically utilized uh, in the evaluation of the homoscedasticity um, of, uh, of variance assumption, so our constant variance assumption. So the basic idea is that um, if you uh, find uh, statistical significance for um, uh, in terms of um, uh, these tests right here, that would be an indicator that you have uh, heteroscedasticity, which would call into question um, perhaps the use of um, the standard least squares regression uh, that does not make any kind of um, adjustments to the standard errors. And so that's, so with this program though, you can also ask for um, heteroscedasticity um, uh, adjusted uh, standard errors. So um, making them essentially robust standard errors. So I'm gonna walk through both of these um, programs right here, or macros. So, and I've installed that pretty much doing the same thing that I did with uh, Andrew Hayes's. Uh, and you'll see that under regression, I've got it right here, uh, heteroscedasticity test. Um, and so um, at this point, we'll, we'll run those uh, analyses. I also have um, on here, uh, um, Andrew Hayes's older uh, macro, uh, the H, um, basically it's an older um, uh, approach to getting um, uh, robust standard errors. And uh, that is actually uh, coming from uh, this macro down here. Let's see where I find it, uh, HC Reg. Um, this is just um, a much more drilled, drilled down version of what you would get with respect to uh, this particular macro. So as he says on his website, uh, it's becoming obsolete with the release of the RLM. So, uh, but I will just kind of show that as a point of contrast so you can see what it looks like. So. For starters, let's start with uh, Andrew Hayes's um, uh, macro. So we're gonna go to Analyze, go to Regression, uh, RLM Macro by Andrew Hayes. Now, first of all, uh, really quickly, the, the, the basic model that we're gonna be looking at, we have a dependent variable which will be achieved, and we have a set of independent variables right here. So gender, subject matter, interest, mastery goals, and anxiety. And so I'm gonna move Achieve, which is gonna be my dependent variable, to this box and move the remaining variables over to the regressors box. Um, I can ask for standardized coefficients. Uh, I can ask for you know, a number of different things. One of uh, the kind of cool things about this particular 
um, uh, macro is you can even get all subsets regression. It's really pretty slick. Um, and if you want regression diagnostics, um, you know, basically kind of, you know, in the same way that you might get if you're running the analysis through regression, just standard regression module and click on save, you know, you can ask for various things like Mahalanobis and Cook's D and, and things like that. You can get some of that through uh, this macro as well. So basically what it'll do is it'll create a new file that would incorporate some of those, um, those uh, diagnostic indicators. Um, so, I'll sh uh, so you don't actually have to do it. I'm just saying that you, you know, it is available to you. So I'm, gonna I'm just gonna stick with this right here. Notice the confidence interval is already defaulted at 95%. Um, there are other options if you want it. And down here where it says covariance estimator, HC, so if I click on this, there are various um, adjustments to the uh, standard errors. And uh, I'm going to pivot off of uh, uh, Hayes and Kai's uh, 2007 article, where they actually recommended using either the HC3 or HC4 um, uh, estimator. So I'm going to use HC3. Uh, so I'm going to click on this, go down to HC3. And uh, at this point, I'll click on OK. And uh, so you can see we've got several, you know, a, a number of pieces of information. We have the multiple R right here, the R square value, uh, the F test, um, and, um, you know, there's our P value for uh, uh, testing the significance related to R square. Down here where it says regression model, you can see we have the coefficients and then a column containing SC. And so these are the robust standard errors uh, using that particular adjustment. That means that then that the t-value, um, p-values, and confidence intervals are all going to be reflecting the adjustment to the standard errors. So um, if you uh, scroll down a little bit further, you can see we've got, um, we also asked for those standardized estimates, including the correlation, simple correlation between each of the independent variables and the dependent variable, uh, semi-partial correlations, and then uh, partial correlations right here. And then these would be your standardized uh, regression weights, or, you know, basically we call them beta weights. So um, at any rate, uh, that's, you know, that's what we have right there. If we want to compare this just against um, what you would get in terms of the standard errors, we just run our analysis. I'm going to take these off. Run our analysis without the adjustment. You can see the difference. Um, the, uh, for the standard errors. The standard error for model one, uh, well, for our model, that for the intercept is 33.978. Uh, you can see it's 47.919. Uh, for gender, it's 1.849 uh, versus um, 2.1, uh, then uh, 0.195 for the, um, for the next one is versus 0.190. So you can see that these standard errors in this, in this column right here tend to be a little bit larger than those that we have uh, when we don't um, adjust for uh, the possibility of uh, heteroscedasticity. So um, at any rate, uh, there you go. Uh, so that's kind of the difference uh, that, you, that you get right there. Let me just show you one more time. Uh, let's just, uh, I'll show you what you get if you click on regression diagnostics. We'll click on OK, and uh, what you'll see is this is going to be the same output, but now it generates a new file that contains uh, all of our variables as well as those diagnostics. And so you can see, uh, you know, here we've got the fitted values, residuals, um, Halanovis distance, Cook's D, and, and so forth. So that's, um, that's essentially uh, Andrew Hayes's macro, um, uh, the new one. Uh, the old one, by the way, looks like this. If we want to use uh, that one, the HC uh, um, regreg, uh, regression, um, when uh, basically you can see right here, um, we would just be putting our achieved variable into the dependent box, uh, gender and uh, through anxiety into the predictors box. You can uh, click on HC method and I've already got it set for uh, HC3. And uh, so that's the difference right there. So it's quite a difference uh, in terms of what's printed out. But you do see that we have our F test right here, uh, the standard errors, uh, uh, the robust standard errors, the t-test and the p-values, uh, all those reflecting the adjustments for um, um, uh, any kind of heteroscedasticity that may be present. Okay, so that, that takes care of Andrew Hayes's um, uh, version. Now we're going to go to this one right here where we're going to look at, um, uh, the, and, and again, the nice thing about this particular uh, macro is that it does incorporate 
um, tests for uh, heteroscedasticity, the Broish, Pagan, and uh, Conacher tests. And, um, and uh, basically, uh, to carry out that analysis, once you've installed it, uh, we're going to go to Analyze, go to Regression, and here it is. So heteroscedasticity test, we'll click on it. And I'm just going to reset it and just kind of, you know, sometimes it's just nice, nice to have a visual walkthrough. So I'm just going to put my uh, independence in the explanatory box, outcome in the um, uh, achieve in the outcome box. You can see um, you've got the robust standard error options, HC3. I'm going to click on OK. And so now you can see that uh, here we've got uh, the standard least squares regression output. There's our R square value. You can see. Um, you know, as, as before, all of our regression coefficients are exactly the same, whether we're using uh, the default OLS versus uh, the heteroscedasticity robust standard errors. But you see the differences lie in the uh, column for standard errors right here versus here. So um, we, we basically were able to generate both of those using uh, Andrew Hayes's uh, macros um, and, um, and then also uh, juxtaposing those against uh, the standard errors from the standard least squares regression. So then we have our T values uh, down here, uh, uh, significance levels, 95% confidence intervals, all down here in this area adjusted for, um, uh, or uh, after we've adjusted the standard errors. We'll scroll down and you'll see um, that we have uh, the ANOVA uh, summary table down here. This looks like this may be from the uh, standard least squares uh, regression um, um, prior to any kind of adjustment. So uh, that's uh, something to kind of note there. When you look at um, Andrew Hayes's um, uh, F value uh, that's printed out up here, you can see it's 9.0307. Uh, the uh, F value from uh, this uh, macro uh, is printed out as, um, oops, where is it at? There it is, 9.524. If we compare that with our uh, previous regression earlier on, you can see it's a 9.524. So that's where I'm uh, getting that uh, supposition from. Um, okay, so with the Broish Pagan and uh, Conacher test, I, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I probably am not. Um, but uh, you can see down here uh, that with respect to those tests, um, in this little area, we've got the, uh, the, the test results. And you've got uh, the Broish Pagan test and the Conacher test. These are the test values. Um, using a Lagrange multiplier test. We have significance levels right here, and the P, you know, um, basically if your p-values are, um, are uh, greater than, say, 0.05, conventional alpha, uh, then uh, we would um, assume that um, the assumption of um, homoscedastic uh, errors or residuals uh, is met. Um, in other words, the constant uh, error assumption is met. Um, if it's less than 0.05, then we would uh, maybe infer that, um, that we've uh, violated that particular assumption. Just keep in mind that uh, these kinds of tests are impacted by sample size, and uh, you know the drill that um, um, uh, the larger the sample size, the greater likelihood of uh, rejecting the null. So uh, just keep that in mind as you're evaluating whether or not you've uh, violated uh, or whether we violated the assumption and can't use the standard least squares regression. If it's so, um, in this particular case, it looks like uh, based on these tests, there, there's evidence that we would not have violated that assumption if we were using the standard least squares regression. So that would call into question the need to um, utilize adjusted uh, standard errors or robust standard errors um, in the way that we have. Um, but you know, also keep in mind that this is, like I said, this is a significance test. It's probably not a bad idea to also, um, you know, look at uh, residuals plots and so forth to further evaluate whether the assumption is met. So um, at any rate, that um, that pretty well la lays it out for you, um, and um, I hope you find this useful. That, like I said, uh, these are two really neat macros that are available to you. Um, you know, the nice thing about Andrew Hayes uh, macro, the first one is that it does contain a lot more uh, options in terms of, um, you know, different types of output. Um, and it does uh, incorporate uh, that nice little aspect of uh, the um, uh, all subsets regression. Um, if you uh, choose uh, to go with the, the latter uh, approach, uh, the nice thing is, is that you do get significance tests uh, related to, uh, you know, testing the um, 
uh, assumption of uh, constant variances, um, but uh, you, you don't get quite as much in, in the way of the um, uh, individual output in other areas. So um, at any rate, just uh, I hope this I hope you find this useful and um, good luck with your research.